Many of the factors that need to be considered when opening a medical practice are your demographics. And depending upon the nature of your specialty and the location that you want to go to, as I said before, location, location, location. That's the single most important part of opening a medical practice. In the demographics, you have to consider the age of your prospective patient. You also have to consider the gender. What is the median income of the target you're trying to reach? Who is your competition, depending upon the procedures that you're going to try to perform? And what's the population in that specific area? All five of these specific topics are very important in order for you to be able to maintain profitability and get a good patient mix. When it comes time for you to negotiate medical office space, once again, location, location, and location is very, very important. You have to determine whether or not you want to rent the space, or you want to lease the space, or you want to purchase the space. You have the options of rent, lease, purchase, rent to own, lease purchase, lease to own. And then if you're going to go in and you don't own the property, what type of homeowners association is there in the association, if any? There are triple net leases, which in potentially can include your rent and include your common area maintenance, your taxes, your maintenance, and any homeowners association dues. These are all pretty important. In addition to that, you have to determine whether or not you're going to need a build out that will be applicable to your type of specialty that you want to do. And then what does the CAM include, which is the common area maintenance? What portion of the outside of your building does it include? Because it's going to be very, very important when it comes time for you to ensure that. Negotiate it and see if you can get some free rent up front from your potential landlord. And even if you can pay a year's worth of rent up front, maybe he'll give you one or two months free in the beginning. The last thing is negotiate your percentage increase of your annualized lease going forward up front. It really is pretty difficult to negotiate it afterwards. Knowing your competition is very important because if you are a new physician, this is by far one of the toughest things to overcome. If you're going into an area and knowing your competition, and you're going in with very seasoned medical professionals, this is also going to be very tough because they already have their existing patient base, and now you have to be able to try and be a little bit different in order to lure that prospective patient, unless you're already going to bring your existing patient base with you. Does your competition offer the, offer the same uh, type of services that you're going to provide, or are they a little bit different? If they're a little bit different, you have a little bit of an edge. Then you have price comparisons. What is your competition charging for the same type of services that you're going to provide? And do they offer the different types of social media discounting such as Groupons? And how far is your competitor away from you as far as demographics? When you open up your aesthetic medical practice, Everybody feels that they're a professional at everything that they do, but you really have to realize and appreciate what is it that you're really the best at. So when it comes time for you to select the procedures that you want to promote, what are you most experienced at, and what is your comfort level? Because understand, your competition is marketing out there, and they're going to market against you. So you have to feel what things and what procedures can you promote and what are you going to be most comfortable with? And what is your training level? And what's the training level of your competition? Because they're going to market that they're certified, that they are registered. Different vendors offer different certifications. And you have to be able to compete against that. Second, what are the new and popular procedures out there? Because in the aesthetic marketplace, you know, there is something new each and every day. There's always a new laser. There's always a new toy. Everything comes out every single month about something new, and it just might be a new type of procedure, uh, basically of the same things you've been doing. And lastly, are these new procedures profitable, or are they using or using them as lost leaders?
When you open a new medical practice and it comes time for you to consider what you want to purchase as far as equipment and supplies, these are one of the more painstaking agonies that you're going to go through because it's hitting you right in your pocketbook. And let's be honest, nobody likes to spend money. We all like to receive the money. So the thing that we have to do the most is negotiate our best deal up front. You never get a second chance to get your best deal. So negotiate for your best deal. And more importantly, don't ever be afraid to walk away from the deal. Know who your competitor is. Know what they're trying to promote. And don't buy something that's so many of the same. What are the warranties of the products that you want to buy in capitalized equipment? Are they available for Section 179 if it's still available for tax credit? Do they have extended warranties that you're able to purchase? When they, they go down, do they have loaners? Do they provide shipping and handling, parts and labor? And when you want to buy supplies, try to ensure that you're able to get and negotiate and compare your pricing from one vendor to another. And also see if you can get into a buying group called a GPO, group purchasing organizations, to minimize your expense that you're able to get items and supplies uh, that is offered at discounts because member groups, maybe your academies and associations, maybe your local medical groups that offer higher discounts and rebates. When it comes time to picking out vendors before you open your medical aesthetic practice, hopefully you have a lot of colleagues and friends. Ask around, get references of who they have used in the past. Go on the internet and look for the most popular products. See if there's possibly even some used equipment out there of um, organizations that have closed. Be very, very careful about buying used equipment though because you may be buying somebody else's problems. When you pick out your vendors, there's several factors that you wanna know. Number one, are they reputable? And will they be there for you in the future years? Because many businesses come and go and you wanna know that these same identical companies that you're buying from are going to be there for you now during and after. Are the salespeople there as salespeople, or what I call them order takers, or are they business development managers? Will they help you going forward in order to maintain and to grow your business? And do they really know the procedures that you're going to perform, or are they going to sell you something that they want to sell you in order to make a commission? A good sales vendor, and a good vendor is going to know the best piece of equipment to sell you in order to maintain profitability because they want your business now and they want it in the future. And do they only represent the item and the line that you're carrying or do they represent multiple things that you can purchase in addition to the serviceability? It's not always a bad thing to have a vendor that offers one line, but always be sure that the people that you're buying from will always be there to help you and service you after the purchase.